what does it mean to be born again? I mean, really, that's a life-changing question. And that's what we're going to discuss in today's episode. Hello world, my name is David Dorn, and this is Preposterous, which is not your typical Bible study. This season, we are walking through the Gospel of John together, and I don't know about you, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I hope you are too. But if this is your first time watching, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to this channel so that you can enjoy this Bible study weekly. Now, in John chapter 3, we find one of the most important stories found in the entire book, maybe even the Bible. Okay, so the cross and resurrection are important, and maybe some verses in Romans they're pretty high up there. But this one definitely cracks the top 10 for sure. So the story picks up at night in the early days of Jesus' three-year ministry. A guy by the name of Nicodemus came to see Jesus that evening. Now, an important detail was that it was in the evening. You see, Nicodemus was a leader of the Jewish religious sect called the Pharisees. These were the religious leaders who oversaw the Jewish religion. The Gospel of John repeatedly shows the conflict between them and Jesus' teaching. In fact, it's this group that has Jesus arrested and ultimately crucified for his teachings that they consider blasphemous. They thought it was outrageous that Jesus would claim to be God's son, so they had him killed. Nicodemus was one of them. So he came to Jesus under the cover of night to keep it from being found out that he was interested in what Jesus was saying. Let's look at this. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. So Jesus says, if you want to be a part of this new thing that I am doing in the world, if you want to be a part of the kingdom that I am building, then you have to be born again. And Nicodemus, a professional religious leader and a well-educated man said, do what? Jesus says, you've got to be born of water and of the Spirit in order to fully get what I'm talking about. Now this whole idea of sin and Forgiveness and grace make sense only up to a point. It takes God's Spirit to help us accept and believe any of it. I believe that the Holy Spirit is working on everybody in the world to get them to the point of accepting it. But what does it look like to accept it, to be born again? Well, first let's address this water thing that Jesus mentions. Some think he's referring to baptism. And while I believe baptism is a sacrament, meaning that it's a special holy thing, I don't think it saves you. We say in my church that baptism is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Baptism is the spiritual equivalent of a wedding ring. It doesn't make you married. It just lets everybody know that you are. Baptism is a sign to everyone that you are now in God's family. Now, there are others who think, and I lean toward their perspective, that Jesus is referring to human birth. To be a part of my kingdom, you've got to be number one, born, and number two, marked by my spirit, AKA saved. And how do you become saved? It's actually quite simple. Paul writes in Romans 10, nine, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. To be saved or to be born again, all you need to do is acknowledge who Jesus is, that Jesus is God and is in charge of your life, and believe that he actually resurrected from the dead. To believe Jesus actually is a real person, is really God, and is really alive is kind of the standard. Now you can become saved or to be born again through simply a sincere prayer. Billy Graham was the most famous evangelist of the 20th century. Did you know he preached over 215 million people in his life? The version of the sinner's prayer that he used at all of his, his big speaking engagements was this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, amen. If you're wanting to accept Jesus, go back and pray that prayer or read it in the description down below. 
Like they never had one moment where they gave their lives to Jesus, but it happened over many moments. I think that counts too. Ultimately, to be born again means leaving behind the old way of thinking about life and the world and accepting Jesus' way. Once that happens, something rather mysterious takes place. We believe that the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. That's what Jesus is referring to. God's Spirit comes and gives you a new life that lasts forever. When your physical body eventually dies, it ain't over. You get to be with Jesus in a world he's made perfect. You get to be fully part of this kingdom he's starting here and now, and that will continue on forever and ever more. So the question of the day is this, have you ever placed your faith in Christ? Have you prayed a prayer acknowledging who Jesus is and your need for him? Or has it been over time that you've come to faith in Jesus? Or do you wanna do that right now? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you find faith in Jesus. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, press like and share it on social media, and please subscribe to me here on YouTube. That will help the show. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily content. And if you'd really like to help the show, you can go be a Patreon over on my Patreon. Links are down below. And if you'd like to download this video or study guide, head over to preposterousproject.com or follow all the links that are down in the description. I'll see you again soon. God bless.